Now, you were abducted just three or four houses away, right? I was. And your, your kidnapper pulled up and pulled right up to the curb, right? He did. And exited his car. And what did he say to you first? What was the first thing he said to you? He said, hold on, I need to catch a, get a butterfly catcher out of my trunk. Get a butterfly catcher out of his trunk. Now at five years old, I was naive. Who, who would think that you know, a butterfly catcher would do any damage? Right. And so did he go to his trunk? He did. And what did he do? He looked like he was rummaging through something. I knew there wasn't an actual butterfly catcher. Right. And then right after. And when he came out from behind the trunk, what did he do? He put his arms around my mouth and told me to get into the back of the car as he shoved me to the floorboards. Okay. And was he armed at this point? I didn't see any weapon at that point. Um, it was later on that I saw a weapon. Okay, you did see a weapon later, but not here. Not right there, no. Now, the size differential between him and you at this point was, he was two, three times bigger than you, because at exactly. five years old, and I've seen the pictures of you, you weren't big as a minute, <laughs> right? So you're, you're tiny, and so he scoops you up, and you're completely overpowered, right? Exactly. What went through your mind at that point? Do you remember that moment? At that moment, I was like, am I going to live? Am I going to make it out alive? So even at five, you knew this is bad. Th this, you knew this could be life-threatening for exactly. you. Exactly. And at, at, at five, you're, you did have a survival instinct that kicked in. I did. And you said when he's taking you away, he, there was a song that he played over and over. And how long did he drive before you got to a, a location? I don't know exactly, at least 20, 30 minutes. And that song just kept playing over and over. Okay, and you're where at this point? In the back floorboard of the car. Okay. But as I was whimpering and crying, trying to save my life, is when he um, pulled out a gun to my temple and said, stop crying or I will shoot you. Okay, and so this is over the, he holds it over the back seat? Yes, he did. You saw his face. I did. I, did, I didn't want to look at it a lot. It terrified me. He took you to an abandoned warehouse, right? Yes, he did. Tell me what happened to the, in general terms, and I'm, I don't want to embarrass you. I'm not asking you to be in graphic detail about this, but tell me what happened in your five-year-old mind. Um, <clears throat> and a sexual assault happened. Um, at that point, I didn't really know what was happening. I was five. I didn't right. really know what it was happening, why he was doing it. Um, but I do know he, he took my shirt off and uh, performed very inappropriate things to a five-year-old at that point. Um, he stared at me with an evil grin as he was doing stuff. And then he did force you out of the car at that point uh, because he, he wasn't taking you with him. So he forced you out of the car, and we'll talk more about what happened then. Um, after nearly a year of searching for Brittany's abductor, there was a huge break in her case. Not only did it lead to an arrest, it also led to a confession of multiple child kidnapping and sexual assaults. Uh, we'll hear about those after the break. Plus, what did Brittany's attacker do after he left her to die? And we're gonna talk about how he left her, in what condition he left her. Uh, we have his written confession. We're going to look at that after the break. Police are combing the county in their search for a child molester. Kevin Schaus was on the run for an entire year. I couldn't leave my house. I couldn't go to school. I was terrified that he could attack me again. 